Welcome to Intro to Java with an emphasis on AP Computer Science A with Tokyo EdTech, that is me. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at static methods. So static methods, we're gonna look at how to define a static method. We're gonna look at how to call static methods. We're gonna be sending values to methods. We're gonna be returning values to methods. We're gonna take a look at something called scope and uh, local variables. This kind of tells us where these variables are accessible. Uh, and we'll look at a very important concept called method overloading. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at the code. So first of all, the question is, you know, what is a method? So a method is just, you know, an organized, like I, I think of it as like a section of code that does a particular task. Um, so oftentimes we have repeated code in, in our program and we always want to report, uh, we always want to avoid repeated code. So what we do is we take that code and we put it into a method and then we call that method. So let's go ahead and just go ahead and write a simple method. And you'll see here it says send no value, return no value. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So the first thing we need to know about a method, uh, is it public or private? So public means it is accessible from outside of this class, from another class, or is it only, or if it's private, it's only accessible within that class. So for our, in our, this case, we're gonna make sure it's public, but it would work either way, to be perfectly honest. Um, static, and static means that it is part of the class. So we have this class called static methods. So if we were to use this method outside of this class, it would be static methods dot, and whatever we're about to call this. Um, so for now, this is a static method. Keep in mind, static methods, I like to say, are attached to classes. And then we need the return type. In this case, we are returning no value. So it is void. And again, we saw some of this stuff in the earlier unit, especially with strings and string methods and the math class and the math class methods. And this is going to be called print the answer. And so this is a very simple method, uh, system.out.println, and it prints 42 because that is the answer, the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything. Um, so if I compile this, it compiles, and then if I run it, we see basically nothing, there's no output here. So that's because we need to actually call the method. So I'm gonna say print the answer, and we're going to compile it again. I'm going to run it. And now you can see that it, it, says it actually outputs 42, which is quite nice for us. So how this works is, if you recall, our execution begins with the main method. So we get to the main method, and we get to print the answer. So it looks for this method and says, oh, there's a method called print the answer. It jumps down here, executes this code. And then when it gets back to the end, it jumps back and continues. Now there's no other code in here, so we don't see anything else, but that's basically how it works. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, now this is a very simple method. Uh, again, we are not sending a value, this is empty, and we are not returning a value because this is void. Okay, so let's go ahead and send a value and uh, not return a value. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new method. I'm going to call it public static. Remember, we're doing static methods here, void. And if you remember, in our loop unit, we did countdown. And I'm going to go int seconds. I'll explain all this in a minute. And hopefully this will look familiar. So for uh, it was int i equals seconds. That here. i is greater than 0. i minus minus because we're counting down. Yeah, but this doesn't look familiar. Uh, Rewatch the uh, iteration video. And system dot, oops, system dot out dot print ln. And we're gonna print i. Okay. And then once that is done, once the loop is done, we're gonna go ahead and print system dot out dot print ln. Boom. And we're gonna close that off. You notice here there's a little problem. Let's see here, there we go. So this should match that, and this should match that. So again, I want to compile it. Compile, that's a good sign. But we also need to call it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, say count down 10. So what happens is this value 10 is sent down to here 
to seconds. So that's the same as writing, that'd be the same as writing like in here, seconds equals 10. But what's nice about this is it's not, uh, you know, it's not stuck at 10. If we wanted to have a longer countdown, we can make it 20, we can make it uh, 1,000. Nobody, nobody cares. Uh, whatever number we want to put in there, we can put in there. So it jumps down to here. Seconds becomes, in this case, 10. So i equals seconds. So i equals 10. i is greater than 0. So we print 10 minus 1, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we get to 0. 0 is not greater than 0. Loop ends. And then we print boom. So let's go ahead and compile it. I think I already did that. And run it. And you can see there we've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and boom. So again, what's nice about this is if later in our program, let's say, okay, well, now we need to do a 30 second countdown. Okay. So instead of having to you know, copy and paste this, change this to, from 10 to 30, I can just do this over and over again, no matter how many seconds I want to count down from. So you can see here we got 30, da, 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 da all the way down to boom. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay. So that was a case where we are sending a value. Well, the first case was sending no value, returning no value. Second case was sending a value. Now we can send multiple values. I just happened to send one here, uh, but you get the idea. And in this case, we're gonna send a value and return a value. And again, we've seen this in the math class we did math dot square root, for example. We sent you know 25.0 and it returned 5.0, for example. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, public static double. Uh, let's say get double. We'll say int x. And I could call this value; it doesn't really matter. And then what we do is we return the value. I'm going to say x times 2.0. Um, and what I should have done here. Was this should be a double? Well, I guess we could do an int. Let's try it. Uh, let's make that an int. We send an int and we'll return a double. So you notice I multiplied it by 2.0 here. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it that way. Um, so so I can go ahead and do uh, get double and let's say five. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that and execute it. And you notice here we don't see anything. Okay, so this is this is a common beginner mistake. I did this intentionally, believe it or not. Um, so the return value has to go somewhere. Okay, so we sent this int, in this case 5. We're returning the double, it should be 10.0. But we returned it and did nothing with it. So we either have to do, we can do system.out.println. File that. And then there we go, we've printed that value out. So this, the value is returned. This gets replaced with 10.0 in this case. And we are good to go. Now we could also go double, um, let's say call it uh, double val value equals get double five. And then, you know, we can separate it out like that if you prefer value. But this double needs to match the return type. And then same thing. So we get to here. 5 is sent to here. We multiply 5 by 2.0. We return that value back up to here. It's assigned to this value variable. And then we print it out the variable. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so we've got one more case where we send no value but return a value. Um, so this is not super common, but it is possible. So I'll just show you real quick. So I could do public static, uh, we return a value. Let's go ahead and return, um, let's sort of call it uh, pi, okay? and. So we return, let's say 3.14159. And I missed a step there. I forgot to put the return type, which I often do. 
So we want to return because the value of pi is approximately 3.14159. So I can go ahead here and do system.out.println uh, pi. Over the parentheses. And if I compile it and run it, we see 3.14159. Again, so here we're not sending a value. This is empty. But we are returning a double. In this case, we went ahead and printed the double directly. Okay, yeah. So uh, our next, our next, uh, so that's about, that's about all you need to know about methods. We can send values, return values, just everything's got to match up. So just be real careful with that. Um, so scope. Um, scope talks about when and where we can access a variable. So for example, we could put a variable up here, public static, uh, let's say, you know, let's say x equals five, for example. And then you see down here, we, we actually have this x, which is kind of interesting. Um, now, since they're the same value, let's go ahead and make this get double. Let's make this 10. Let's see what happens. So we compile it. Look static. Oh, I forgot the type. Oops. I to do that a lot. And you'll see now it was 10 times 2.0, or which gave us 20. So you see here we have this weird thing. We have an x here, and we also have an x up here. So let me go ahead and try something. I'm going to go ahead and delete this x. I'm going to go ahead to get double. So now we're not sending a value. So I'm going to compile it. And you can see it gave us 10.0. So what happened? So here's the trick. Uh, so when we get to this method, you see this x. So the first thing it does is it looks locally inside the method. And you'll see here, is there an x in here? And the answer is no. So the next thing it looks is into the class itself. Does the class have an x somewhere. And actually it does because we made a public static int called x equals 5. And it uses this value. Pretty cool. So let me go ahead and do 10.0 or 10 again. Let me put back int x. And let me go ahead and do some printing here. So I'm going to go ahead and take, take this again. And I'm going to go ahead and say so system.out.println.x. Go ahead and copy that. Okay, so let's compile that, run it, and let's see what happens here. Okay, so you see we've got 5, 20, and 5. So what happened is this x, it first looked here in this method, okay, there was no x. So then it looked outside into the class and found an x, and that's what it's going to use. But this 10 gets sent down to here. Okay? This x is different to this x. So the scope tells you where it is available. So in this case, this is the local x because we have an x declared here. And the reason is, if we wanted to take this method and use it in another program, we could do that. We don't have to worry about the fact that there is already a variable called x out in this part of the program. Okay, so that gives us a little bit of flexibility and the ability to reuse code better. So doing this, this x, has no impact on this x, which is pretty cool. Um, on a side note, oops, I should probably put that down here in this section. So if I do this, for int i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus, and do system.out.println i, and I do system, I know I spelled it wrong, system.out.println i, okay, and if I compile this, we're going to see an error. You see here, static methods tells you line 25. It says cannot find symbol. 
Okay, and it actually points to the eye. So you're, it tells you exactly what the problem is. Okay, um, you gotta really learn to read these uh, error methods, er error messages. Uh, so you can see this eye, it, even though it's declared here, it doesn't know what it is here. Okay, that is because these variables that are declared in the for statement declaration are local to this loop. Okay? So they only exist from here to here. Once this is done, it's over. Pretty cool. Now that said, if I had done this, int i equals zero and compiled it, I'll get an error because it says this i is already declared here. So the rules are a little bit weird. So in this case, I would have to do this because I already declared it out there. That would work. Pretty nifty, pretty nifty. Um, so again, it's just something to keep track of and be aware of. You may see these uh, types of errors and that tells you kind of where different variables can be accessed. And our last, uh, our last uh, topic is overloading. Okay, so to overload a variable, um, or to overload a method, uh, so an overloaded method has same name, different signature. And signature is the number, type, and order of the parameters in the method declaration. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain that. So, oops. So, I'm going to go ahead and make a new method, public static void, and it's going to be print greeting. And I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln eight. What's going on? And then I'm going to make another function, another method. And what I'm going to put in there is I'm going to put string message. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and print oops, plus message. Plus message. Right. So now, watch what I do here. So I'm going to say print greeting and print greeting. Uh, how you doing? Okay, so I'm going to compile that. And what did I mess up here? Oh, semicolon. Bad. Okay, I still I saw that problem with the I down here. Gotta get rid of that. And, okay. So you can see here we have two methods. So this part is exactly the same, but this part is different. So in this case, there is nothing being sent. So the signature is empty. In this case, a string is being sent. So that's the signature. So this is empty, and this is this would be one string. So what happens is when we try to call the method, it says, okay, is there a method called print greeting that takes no arguments, takes no values? And it calls that method. If there is a method, and then it's, in this case, okay, here's a string. Is there a method with that name that accepts one string? And in this case, there it is. So you can, so based on the type and the number of the data that's being sent to the method, it chooses which one to call. And that is what we refer to as overloading. Okay, so same method, different signature. Pretty cool. So that's about it. That's, that's kind of the, the gist of static methods. Um, you know, my uh, ebook, which is linked 
you know, in the description has a bit more information about that and some more examples uh, you might find helpful. But uh, yeah, go ahead and give, a, give that a look and uh, hopefully this will help you get started and will help you to keep on coding. So again, we learn how to define some methods. We learn how to call some methods, sending values sometimes, not sending values other times, returning values sometimes, not returning values other times. We looked at the idea of scope, the idea of a local variable, and so you know how that works and how, why we might use that for code reusability. And then we looked at the very important concept of method overloading. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, keep on coding. Take care.